Well, if only we had more time. So throughout the day, we've been able to play the last five matches we needed to get the 50 duels in the World Championship qualifiers. But I want to show you something that's super interesting here. So if we go to duels, I actually have not lost in stage two. We got 10,000 points. We played 10 duels. Uh, oh, not rewards list. We want to see match history. So uh, I got maybe one more interesting match for you here, but you can see that uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten matches in stage two, all wins using, of course, Flow Andres. Uh, the deck list video will be in the description as usual. Uh, and just like ranking wise, if I had more time to play, like I have to pack for vacation, so can't continue to play. But um, yeah, like you can see here, 11,000. So if we were able to just grind out a little bit more, we probably could get up to like 15, be top 5,000 maybe um, in North America, which is my region, so I'm in Canada. Uh, I'm already top 1,000, which I don't know if that's good or not, but you know, for 10 matches, 10 wins, I'd say that's pretty decent. Uh, but let's go ahead and take a look at some of these final matches to wrap up the WCQ season, or the first one in Master Duel. All right, this was my final match in the WCQ 2023 season of Stage 2. And if you watched the intro, you know that we were on a 10 win streak. This match is pretty nutty. Uh, going first with Floundries, we actually won the coin toss, so that's always positive. Our opening hand is okay because we've got a bird and map. Unfortunately, the uh, duality only revealed another token, so we're going to grab that. And we're going to attempt to play. I can tell as soon as I summon this token, the opponent's field lit up. So I know they have an imperm. And I'm fine with it because I have another token that I can extend play from. Uh, even if these cards end up staying on the field and I have nothing to target with token, I can just activate map again and reveal token. So this is why I play that one extra bird. I just find having the extra birds are helpful. And you guys can see the results if you watch my videos, right? And how we play. It just fits my play style, I guess. I don't know. Under uh, Fissure, Math Mech does suffer. And I have been posting Math Mech videos. This deck is pretty good. This is at like 9,000 rating in stage two. So, you know, this guy obviously has been doing work with Math Mech. And even under things like uh, Grave Shufflers and getting their cards banished, which obviously all of that sucks for Math Mech, um, it can still do some work because, again, it has hand traps and it has other utility options. It doesn't always have to rely on Super Factorial, just despite what people say. Um, obviously, Super Factorial is like one of the heartbeats of the deck, like in terms of its engine. Getting that set up is super strong, and they can't do that because if all of their math mech cards get banished the super factorial will die and i don't even think you can activate circular on the super factorial regardless the opponent is able to still play with the parallel exceed extension into alan Bershin, into nabla and they do a pretty unique play so you can tell that this guy knows what his deck does unlike me when i play i have no idea what's going on they're going to actually go ahead and bring out the multiplication and then synchro off because they were able to make a level uh, a monster level uh, level eight with the multiplication and they know Geo Math Mech Final Sigma in the extra monster zone, nothing in Floandres' main deck can beat it. So I'm in trouble here, and this card does double damage when it's in the extra monster zone, which is crazy. So I'm all instantly down to 2600. They set a card, and if this is an imperm, I lose. Uh, despite having such a strong start and setting up basically anti Math Mech with the D Fisher, right? So again, Math Mech, all these decks should have utility options just because you know something like important of their engine gets shut down doesn't necessarily mean it's game over for that deck and again you guys have seen well you're going to see it here too you've seen me out towers monsters before towers monsters usually are a problem for flow on Dries. Um, in this instance unfortunately the opponent has ash blossom so again on those hand traps to slow us down and we didn't have anything to chain block the empin with but that's okay because we have eaglin as well to extend so normal summon for turn eaglin and this is actually good because double tributing over the empin gets it in the vanish pile which leaves us with no small bird to get kind of attacked for for game and we're able to have toucan live next turn to bring back that empin that we just tributed off so we are still able to get trap card which is super important and we are going to now be able to go into battle phase and beat into the opponent's alum version and leave them on nothing but final sigma which will do 600 damage when beating into the empin and and Empin will, won't, won't affect it because, again, the Math Mech Geo Sigma is in the extra monster zone, meaning it's unaffected. So we're down to 2,000 life points. After I see the opponent go battle phase, main phase 2, attempt to go end phase, this is where we set up the play. So thankfully, we didn't have to use a pot card like Extravagance or Prosperity. So we've got our full extra deck. And what do you know? It's going to be one of those instances where the extra deck comes in handy. So there's a number of different things you can do here. We could have gone into like the Shurag to Suicide and then bring a... Um, bring the beast monster to hand when it goes uh i think was it says when it goes to graveyard uh if this card is sent to the graveyard oh so it wouldn't it wouldn't trigger because it would get banished because of the fissure but we could also go into a link monster any link monster except for 
Smore because it can't be used as Link Material. And then into Access Code, if we were playing Underworld Goddess, we can go into Underworld Goddess. That's what this play sets up right here, right? We do the Dreaming Town in Main Phase 2 to set up for the Out of the Towers monsters. So, pretty strong stuff. Uh, Floandries, you know, that extra deck coming in clutch sometimes. So, we're going to just go ahead and go into Phoenix, pitch the evenly match since we have one set already. Get rid of this back row, which is, ends up being nothing. And then we're going to link off into the access code. Access code is going to gain 2,000 off of the Nightmare Phoenix. And we out the Geomathmech Final Sigma. It will be able to get them a Mathmech card because it was sent from the field to the graveyard. Or, or just left the field, sorry, not to the graveyard, obviously, to the banished pile. But the opponent is going to be able to play now off of that subtraction. They're going into a double play. Um, I don't know what extension they're going to plan to go into, but that normal summon will trigger my map. And I'm going to now go ahead and go full rotation. Every single bird is going to go off here. And we've got double Empin in hand and the Ryza Mega Monarch. So there's no sense in keeping any birds because we don't have the Dreaming Town to continue play. So we're just going to go ahead and activate all four off of this map, which is exactly what you're going to see happen here. So just playing it safe, going for the Empin and Chain Blocking, just making sure we get some bodies on board and to trigger Trap to flip their cards face down. Instead of summoning all the birds and risk getting interrupted, not that I don't think there's anything that really could since DD Crow isn't live thanks to the D Fissure, um, which is something they might have in their hand, which is kind of causing them to brick. Um, but you're going to see here, we're going to stack the deck with the diameter and the uh, called by. And we actually give them the called by uh, to draw. And this could have won them the game, right? Uh, thankfully, we do get a token. But we, we were debating. I was actually debating for a quick second if I should activate Advent on the Empin. But then I realized, like, oh, I already have everything in rotation. Why would I even need to do that? And thankfully, I didn't. Because if, if I would have got rid of that Empin, they would have kept us in attack mode. Oh, no, they wouldn't because the access code would have had 3,300 attack, right? Never mind. Yeah, so we were fine either way. All good. The opponent just ends turn with the Nibiru on field. And I'm like, well, they got 6,000 life. I still had like over 2,000 seconds, so I was totally fine. This is the benefit of playing a deck you know. You don't have to spend time thinking too much. Um, and the opponent realizes they're just going to go full rotation again. We have the unexplored wins to put cards back so that we can continue summoning the Eaglin for the engine pieces. And that is game. So that was our 10th match on our 10th win streak. All right, in this matchup, our opening hand is amazing, but we are going second. So for going second, this hand is actually not that great because we got no shifter and we got no evenly matched. The opponent reveals that they are on Marinza, so props to this guy for playing something new and exciting. I don't remember when this was because this was a little while ago. This might have been after I hit like Duelist level max before stage two started. So most likely this guy was just playing a deck that he'd get challenges done with. Uh, but hey, Marinsus is a really good deck, I think. Um, I really like it. The problem is that it is very prone to interruptions, so it needs more ways to like extend. Unfortunately, or uh, fortunately for them, unfortunately for us, we have no interruptions. So they're able to go full combo here, and they are likely going to set up into the Argonaut with the Battle Ocean, with the Crystal Heart, making the Argonaut completely unaffected by opponent's card effects, meaning I can't even use Unexplored Wins to tribute it off. However, I can use Unexplored Winds to tribute off the Ocean, which would turn the inv invincibility of the Argonaut offline. The opponent sets a card, and you know you have to assume that they're on hand traps, right? Marinsas is is like one of the reasons it's so good, just like with Sprite and Mathmech. You know, it, you know those decks aren't necessarily the greatest, obviously, in a tier zero format, but they're known for playing hand traps, and that is what gives them a, a, a really good edge against tier limits as well as against rogue decks. So. Evaluating this setup, I know how the Argonaut works because I play Marincess. If I activate Unexplored Winds and they opt to try to negate it, that's fine because I can still use the effect of Unexplored Winds. Um, this card, you have to like like negate an activation of a card that you actually like are going to negate, not the activation of a card that's like continuous and you don't end up negating it, right? So I learned that the hard way in like a, an event a long time ago. So the opponent does opt to negate the Pot of Extravagance, which is interesting, bringing the uh, Coral to field. And just keep in mind that this card is kind of like an Avermax in that when it's on the field, your my monsters can only attack it. So all their other monsters are protected uh, from battle because until I get this off the field, I can't beat over anything else. So now we're going to go Defissure and Unexplored Winds. Look at this. I could not believe it. I was like, bro, are you kidding me right now? The opponent had Twin Twisters. That like... That, that, oh my, that literally saves them. That's crazy. It makes sense though, right? Like you can't even hate on them for playing that because there's so much like D Fissure running around and like uh, Exo Sister and Fluandries and stuff. And, and Marinsas does suffer if their cards get banished because they can't recur them with their engine. So playing Twin Twisters makes sense, but the opponent definitely got some good mileage off of that. Um, pitching an evenly match, interestingly enough, 
in order to get rid of our two uh, pretty powerful spells. So thankfully, we, we're still able to play. All we need is a map and, and a bird, and we're able to at least play. So we're going to go ahead and use the map to banish Eglin, summon Robina, bring back Eglin, of course, grab the Toucan, and now we're going to go ahead and summon the Empin, or sorry, summon Eglin to search Empin, summon Empin, grab back Robina. So chain blocking still. Um, and we grab Advent of Adventure. Why? Because we're going to banish that Empin and grab Street off of it. That gets all four birds in rotation. We're going to go ahead and start to shut down their engine. And this is why Floandries is so good, um, especially against Marincess. The Street puts in so much work. We're banishing their engine so that we shut down their, their uh, re um, like the reoccurring part of their engine, right? So we're going to go ahead and recur that um, Empin off the Toucan and then just summon it again to grab Trap Card. And we're going to set to, and we just end the turn because we can't battle into the Argonaut because it's unaffected by the Empin's effect to reduce its attack. So this card, I believe, will still negate the Argonaut because it's an attack mode, all link monsters, right? And it's a continuous effect. They do reveal that they're on a Kaiju, which is nutty. So they get rid of the Empin, which is really good. And before they can activate the Coral, we're gonna go ahead and activate Dreaming Town on the resolution of the Gamma Seal. That's why it's important to make sure your toggle is on with Floandries. And we're going to go ahead and go rotation from Eglin now to grab the Ryza. And the Ryza is actually going to spin back their Sea Angel, which puts them on nothing to recur in the graveyard with the Coral. And we get rid of the Battle Ocean as well. The opponent normal summons Seahorse, which is going to trigger map because they need to link this off in order to bring out Sea Angel again in order to grab that ocean we just put back to the deck, right? So off of this, we're going to summon Street. Street is going to go ahead and um, banish, I believe it was the Empin, which is going to get recurred with the Toucan. And of course, we bring back the uh, Robina as well. The Empin here is going to now flip the Sea Angel, or sorry, Seahorse face down because we banished the Dreaming Town Trap which will prevent them from link summoning. We search out an unexplored winds. We've got the Empin back in rotation, and now we've got a DD Crow to further interrupt whatever they might have. And we still have the Book of Moon in order to flip the, I think they have a, a Sleepy Maiden in hand that they can special summon. We can flip that face down to prevent a special summon as well, or a link summon. But remember that the Blue Slug has to be a level four or lower, and I'm pretty sure Sea Angel is level four or lower as well. So they couldn't link those off into, into the Sea Angel. Yeah, they can't actually link off anything because they summoned the, the Seahorse to the zone that both the Coral and the Argonaut points to. So even if they summon Sleepy Maiden, they, they couldn't, they couldn't like, they had to link off the Argonaut in order to link summon properly, right? Because they can't link off this, the, if they summon the Sleepy Maiden here, they can't link off the Sea Angel, geez, the Sleepy Maiden and the Coral into anything because they can't summon it under the zone that the Coral points to, uh, or geez, that the Argonaut points to. Hopefully they're keeping track. Anyways, on our side, we end up tributing off that Empin for the Ryza, which is going to absolutely obliterate that Argonaut because it can be targeted now and affected because Ocean is no longer on the field. So we completely out all their resources. The Coral is offline because the Sea Angel points to it and therefore they can't use, sea, uh, they can't use Coral to bring back like uh, the Crystal Heart to, to link summon into like a Bubble Reef or Argonaut. And they're gonna go ahead and reveal Sleepy Maiden, but they can continue to link Climb. They can go into like, um, uh, like Marbled Rock or something, but we're going to go ahead and shut that down as well. So, geez, we played through a lot there for Marincess. And despite, you know, when you see those big towers monsters, you might be like, oh, it's GG's. But again, you, you, you should be able to play through them. Hopefully this match wasn't too chaotic with me talking over it because it was it was hard trying to keep track of everything. Hopefully there were no uh, major um, misspeaks on my part in terms of what was going on. But uh, hopefully you're able to follow it. And uh, I, I like that match. I really do like Marincess. But uh, again, just showcasing the power of Floandries against, I guess, what you can consider rogue in the meta.